I didn't grow up with pectus. Over the last 10 or 15 years, I started noticing it. When I'd be running, it'd be harder and harder. I'd get more short of breath. I was getting more palpitations in my heart, chest pain, diff just different things. And went to a pulmonary specialist locally, and they did a chest scan. From the scan, what you could see was it had pushed my heart all the way over to the left. And when it did that, the heart smashed my left lung. So my heart's beating over here, it's way over here, and I have no space left in between my spine and sternum where your heart's supposed to be. They sent me to Duke and talked to that guy, but no one, they all saw the pectus in the chest scan, but they said, well, there's nothing you can do. You know, they would never operate on someone your age and kind of sent me packing. My husband's a doctor. And he came back, he looked at the chest scan again with some radiologists and saw that it was really that severe and got concerned. And one of his colleagues um, has been around the country a lot and saw this Dr. Funkelsrud in, at UCLA, I think it was, who'd given talks on it and who, who had done the surgery. Well, he's since, I think, retired or whatever, so my husband got on and started researching who he'd worked with. And from who we'd worked with, he found Dr. Jaruzewski. We don't know exactly what causes pectus, but um, there's two different kinds. There's a kind where the chest actually pushes out, and then there's one where the chest caves in. And uh, especially when it caves in and puts pressure on the heart, shifts the heart, crushes the lung field, uh, they can have tremendous symptoms. It's very interesting if you put these patients with the severe deformities on a treadmill, you can see them the, the follow the normal curve and all of a sudden they flatline. It's like they can't reach that peak. They, can't, they just can't get everything they need out of their chest. I was frightened. I mean, it was something that I felt without this, my life expectancy may not have been too great. I mean, I d had only this much space left. If anything happened, any kind of trauma and, and the shortness of breath and the palpitations and, and the wheezy cough, it just was too much. I was so thankful that we found somebody that could do this after we'd been told, even at Duke, you know, you'll just have to live with it. They just wouldn't operate on somebody your age. So when we arrived there, I was, it was mixed. I was scared, but I was really thankful. I came here uh, several years ago and started doing the repairs. I trained at UCLA specifically on chest wall deformities. And um, it's interesting that the field of pectus has evolved significantly. It was once thought that these deformities were all cosmetic and it didn't affect the patient at all. And now we're finding out that people can have very severe heart and lung problems related to this um, problem. Today is a very special day which we're doing a repair of a, a deformity of the chest wall called a pectus excavatum. That is actually where the chest caves in. And by fixing this, we, we actually push the chest out with a bar using a small incision on either side, correct that, and uh, it, it does wonders for them. It, it changes people's lives and is, uh, uh, it's a critical thing. It used to be in children that we did all the repairs minimally invasive with small, small incisions and bars, and it wasn't thought that we could do this in the adult. Over the past year, few years, we started doing these very successfully in the adult, and that has led to a, a, a much greater population of patients coming to get repair rather than the old one where we actually took ribs out and wired the chest together. It was a much, much bigger deal. So today we have a, a wonderful lady who is, um, has, has had this for a long time and, and is not really concerned at all about the cosmesis of it, but over the past 10 years, she's an avid runner, an avid uh, tennis player, she does yoga. She's noticed a significant drop in her ability to perform her exercise. And uh, if you look at uh, her heart and some of the images that I'll show you, she has this huge shift and crushing of her heart based on the deformity of her chest. So we're going to be fixing that today. And uh, Drs. Notrika and McMahon from PCH are up here, and they're, they're going to be assisting in the case. And then I'm going to be going downtown to help them. 
Um, the, the really exciting thing is that we have two people that are, are professionals at Pectus Repair and Kids, and then you have me that's a professional in repair of the Pectus and adults. And we're combining our experiences, which are very different, and um, coming up with the best possible techniques and, and learning from each other, and uh, it, it's, it's excellent. And I think it's going to bring uh, an incredible amount of, of specialty training, expertise to the Valley. Uh, we're really probably uh, one of only four centers in the United States that does this. So we're, we're hoping, you know, this lady's from North Carolina, and patients are coming from all over the states and out of the country. We did a, a, a young man from Australia the other day. So it, it's very exciting. And and it's going to be a, a, an important uh, contribution to the healthcare in the whole Southwest. This actually is her CT scan, and you can see here this very narrow space between her spine here and her chest, and you actually have like a collapse of the chest wall here. Her heart is completely shifted over into the left chest which is crushing the lung tissue here. And as you go even lower, she even has some pressure here on her liver. This is a, the CT scan of what a normal person looks like. And you can see this nice, wide, rounded shape with the heart sitting here. In uh, Michelle's case, she has this huge collapse and sideward shift of the heart. This is a quick drawing that one of our artists did. And it shows you the rib cage with this red bar supporting and holding it out. And in the adult, we actually sometimes put two or even three bars because of the tremendous pressure and stiffness of the chest. So we place these bars and they stay in several years to allow remodeling of the chest wall. This is kind of a, a, a moderately to very severe depression. This guy actually had a lot of uh, pressure on his heart. And you can see here the two incisions where we slid both bars and lifted the chest and it holds it out in, in perfect position. And that's, that looks completely normal and is a beautiful, great repair. So one thing patients always ask me is, um, you know, how do these bars affect their life? And they actually are underneath the skin. You can barely feel them in skinny people, and they live completely normal lives. This is an x-ray which shows an adult two bars and um, a, a nice repair of, of a post-op patient. She said seven days, and we were just thinking, how is that possible? to do what she was gonna do. So we flew in on Sunday, Monday, they did all the tests. Tuesday morning, she did the surgery, which is putting in these metal bars. And um, I had an epidural in the, the top of my back and they kept me on that for a few days, which was wonderful. I was so comfortable. It helped so much with the pain. Everyone at the Mayo Clinic was just wonderful. And then after a few days, they got me up they finally got me off the epidural, and um, she stood by her word. Saturday, she discharged me, and Sunday, we flew back across the country. I think in six weeks, I should be able to really start doing, I should be able to start, I'm hoping, running again and, and all. I'm not supposed to do a lot of torquing. You know, these bars are in there, and they want them to stay put for now. But I'm able to use my arms, put my arms up in the air. I dry my hair. I can do a lot just this little bit of time out. You feel it. You know they're there. Um, they don't let you forget it. Um, but um, hopefully, I'm hoping in six weeks I'll really be up and going a lot better.